Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Caster Desk. Sierra, Donna, Rosemary, Kelly here. We have a ton of players that are here that were, are participating in their very first regional. Um, and I think that's exciting. We had a couple of those names in our top 32 cut. We featured a few of those players for their first time yesterday. And they've been doing amazing. Yes. And a lot of that is just the online prep that they've been able to do playing in some of the online tournaments and grassroots that have been really great yes. practice. But then also just being able to, I think, look at open team sheets has helped open the doors a little bit more for these newer players to get in and really understand the matchups and the interactions that can really happen between teams because that can be intimidating at first to look at that and go, well, I look, there's so much information to know, but now you have it in front of you and it's like, oh, okay. A lot of these Pokemon are trained, like you still have to figure out how they're trained, but okay, well, I know that these are very common moves, Terra types, and, and that does help. See, I want to give a shout out to the people that are running grassroots events too, because I feel like it's almost like every day that there's a tournament going on. You yes. miss one tournament and there's literally like just 10 more waiting for you. It's just which one you sign up for. And just that in itself has been so incredible to get new players into the game. For people who have been playing casually to get a little bit of a competitive experience, it can be daunting to hop into competitive. So being able to have that olive branch to bring people in has just been nuts. So absolutely love that. But it is time now to get started with our match and start talking about the players. We've been talking about new players. We're talking about people who've been in the game for a while. Well, these are definitely players that have some weight to them. Look at this, Brendan Zhang, first player of 2013 world champion, world's top eight, world's top 16. I mean, when all of your achievements that are like on the list are worlds, like that's nuts. Yeah, we got a chance to see Brendan Zhang on stream actually in San Diego. Uh, this is, yes, this is Aaron Zhang's brother. Um, Really exciting to see how he's been able to grow and evolve with the game, just aging up through those age divisions. And he's also bringing a very different team to what he brought in San Diego as well. And there's the Gastrodon. Fire, Terrasalization, Gastrodon. On paper, I feel like this Pokemon just looks so cool and so good. I mean, with the Storm Drain, you can't get hit by water moves. And then Fire Terra, all of a sudden you take away immunity. I love Gastrodon. It's also one of those Pokemon that's been around forever. And then there's also a favorite Pokemon of yours on this team too. It's a little something for everyone. Yeah, I'm super looking forward to seeing if Sylveon makes an appearance in this matchup. That's definitely one of my favorite Pokemon, but I'm also really excited to see some of the newer Pokemon to Scarlet and Violet also slotted into this team, looking at the Armor Rouge as well as the Brute Bonnet, one of those Paradox Pokemon that has been nice to see whether that's going into a team or the Amoongus. So there's a couple different modes to play around with and you do have the Trick Room option there. Looking at Armor Rouge is one of the slower Pokemon that is on this team. And then also the Gothitelle, both of these Pokemon actually running the Trick Room. Sylveon's also one of those slower trained Pokemon as well as the Gastrodon. So you could get that set up and also play around with that speed control as well. But we also have to talk about Brendan Zhang's opponent and that's Ashton Cox. Ashton Cox is another player that needs no introduction when it comes to his legacy that he has built in VGC. He has so many championship titles under his belt, including 2017 LAIC champion in, and also in 2019. Yeah, when one international championship title is not enough. Um, Ashton's going for two. That is incredible. <laughs> Two-time regional champion as well. And also fun. This has a couple of bit more classic pieces that we've been able to see throughout the event, looking specifically at the Dondozo and Tatsugiri. Roaring Moon, though, one of those Paradox Pokemon we haven't gotten to see too much out of. It kind of feels awkward in a couple of situations, but obviously with this team, Ashton is really making it work, making it to the point of being in top 16. Yeah, and so you can look at speed interactions here because while Brendan does have two Trick Room users available on his team, that Roaring Moon also classically has started to be running that Tailwind. So you could end up getting that set up if you want to, if you know that you can keep the Trick Room in check. But there's also another change on Ashen's team that's a little bit more untraditional, and that's the droopy form Tatsugiri. A lot of the Tatsugiri that we've seen so far have been the curly form or the stretchy form, curly giving you an attack boost with Order Up, but then you also have the stretchy, which is gonna give you the speed boost. Now, droopy form gives you a defense boost with Order Up, but funny enough, 
Dondozo's not running order up here. Dondozo for Ashton's team is going to be a Wave Crash Earthquake for its attacks. And then you do have the Resto Chesto set, so Rest as well as Chesto Berry to help you wake up. So it's actually very interesting to see that it's droopy form when you're not going to be able to make use of that defensive boost. But that's also where the Gastron comes in because that's where something that Brendan's going to be looking to keep in check when you do have that Storm Drain available on Gastro for the Wave Crash. Hey, if you're not running order up, just pick the cutest Tatsugiri and bring it out here. I'm I'm here for it. Being able to see <laughs> the droopy one, even if there's no order up that it's going to be synergizing with. Maybe I it's am... shiny. It, it's it's a, it's shiny's pretty cool. It's the it's the white Tatsugiri. So I, I like. I gotta that. say, I love that there's three different shinies for all the Tatsugiri, and I'm never gonna hunt them because honestly, it seems like a pain. But I will <laughs> just sit and admire from afar. I'm not gonna lie. What's nice about Ashton's team as well, we are gonna have that Iron Hands. It's one of those Pokemon that I still want to see more from it. I have been very vocal with. I've not really seen what I want from this Pokemon, considering it is at the highest usage at this event, that 51%, and. I don't know, it just kind of always seems to be in a really awkward spot. So here's the hoping Ashton can change my mind a little bit on this. Yeah, I think one of the things that we'll have to look at here too is whether or not that Gothitelle makes an appearance. With the Shadow Tag, Ashton would be locked into having whatever Pokemon is out on the field. Um, unless you end up putting the Golden Go in place, you do have that Ghost Typing, so you could get out of there and make a pivot in front of that Shadow Tag Gothitelle but I, I, like we're looking at speed interactions here, Tailwind versus the Trick Room, and then also if Intimidate comes into play here too. Dondozo doesn't necessarily want to take a look at that, and neither does the Iron Hands. And Arcanine is also going to be putting on a ton of pressure onto Ashton's team with the Flare Blitz as well as the Snarl, just having access to being able to go for a lot of that damage control. Will-O-Wisp is also an option on the Arcanine, um, and also that coverage with the Flare Blitz too, looking at Brute Bonnet and Golden Go as two Pokemon that that could also keep in check. And what I'm looking for going into this match is, yeah, there is going to be the Trick Room options over on Brendan's side. Ashton, either you have to play through that, or if there's not going to be that Trick Room option in a site, does have the capability of going for some sort of speed control, though. To be fair, also at the point where a lot of things are just going to be naturally outspeeding. Brenda doesn't really have the speed on his side, but always that vibe for the speed control and being able to play in the conditions that you want is always a really interesting little face-off. There's also another like kind of interesting interaction that could happen here. Uh, the Roaring Moon is actually carrying Throat Chop, and with Sylveon classically going for a Hyper Voice, also has the Throat Spray attached, so it can boost up its special attack after using Hyper Voice. That's one way that the this, um, this Roaring Moon under faster conditions could actually shut down a lot of the Sylveon's damage. Especially when you're looking at Terra Blast as another move that it has in having the Water Terra type, Sylveon would not be able to get off some of that super effective damage uh, into the Brute Bonnet or the Roaring Moon, just a couple of other options on the team. So. A lot of different interactions here to play around with, and we'll have to see what they end up locking into for this game number one. We're getting into team preview soon, and we'll be getting into game one shortly in this best of three. It's really cool to see there's a couple options on both sides to really be trying to mitigate and just stop the opponents in the track for the strategy they want to be going through, and that throw top callout is just such a great example of that. Considering I feel like that is where Sylveon really gets to shine, is just that spread damage attack that she's doing oodles and oodles of damage, but then the Gastrodon for Brendan in comparison to try and stop to make sure water moves aren't going to be completely running amok. So I'm really intrigued with the showdown. So I cannot wait to hop into this battle, especially the fact that now at this point, top 16 into the tournament, we are going to be able to see Pokemon like Gastron. Sylveon making it to this point. Roaring Moon is still doing well. I love this. Leads. They're coming out the Sylveon and the Arcanine to start over on Brendan's end, facing off against the Iron Hands and the Golden Oak. And the Intimidate will drop things down on the Iron Hands end. Yeah, and so even the Arcanine here is set up for a lot of success. You do have the ability to go for something like the Will-O-Wisp if you think that the Iron Hands is going to end up being more of a problem. Snarl can also drop the special attack of this Golden Go while also dealing super effective damage. But we're going to see Brendan lock in very quickly here. And Arcanine is just going to take a swap out, preserving that Intimidate for later. And a good chance to bring this Gastrodon in. I'm excited to see it brought out. And picking the pink Gastrodon, I feel like objectively the correct choice in any situation. Detect onto the Sylveon. 
making sure that this make it rain, which it normally hits so effectively into it, is not going to do anything into that slot. Gastrodon, not very effective hit, definitely takes that a lot better, and of course, the special attack will fall. Bolt switch targeted into the Sylveon as well. That means there's going to be absolutely no pivot option on Ashton's end. Doesn't have a chance to reposition that Iron Hands. Yeah, and one of the things about the Detect that's really nice here is not only does it save Sylveon from that super effective damage, but that Golden Go is also holding choice specs. So now you know what that Golden Go has locked into, and Brendan can start pivoting around and making more of these safe switches. Arcanine going to end up resisting that Make It Rain as well, and you've bought yourself a turn here if you're Brendan to see if Ashton does go for a reset here with the Golden Go. Especially, too, when you have Golden Go next to partners that will be able to reset the special attack for it. It's nice, but this time, the only way out of it is just resetting. But minus one, still going to be running with it. But that damage is definitely not doing nearly as much as it would like. And this Volt Switch definitely not doing much either, considering the negative two attack. But at least swapping out will have a chance to reset that. Yeah, there are a couple of options here that I'd like to see Ashton be able to bring into this situation, and one of those is, in fact, that Dondozo. This might indicate that Ashton has brought the Dondozo and the Tatsugiri together, but Gastron going for the recover here, too, is also going to be problematic with the ability to recover all of this HP loss. Gastrodon is one of those Pokemon that could be around for a while when Ashton doesn't have options uh, to really deal with that. I mean, Earthquake, not going to be the, the best move into that, and Wave Crash, of course, not going to be able to work. And that's one of the dangerous things about Gastrodon is, sure, there is a couple of answers out there that can really check into it. But all of a sudden, if that's not a Pokemon that you have available or it's not one of the four that you've brought, you can find yourself in a really tough situation where a Recover Gastrodon can really just end the game you. Golden Go, now at this negative two special attack, is going to swap out. It is the shiny one. It is very cute. I'm going to give you that a little applause. And now we're going to see it disappear from the field as the commander ability is going to be going off right into the Dondozo to make sure it could get this super awesome boost. Yeah, the boosts are going to be helpful, but you also have to worry about the Arcanine here being able to drop the attack of that Dondozo as Brendan has been able to play around with the pivot so nicely here. But the substitute from Ashton's Dondozo, I feel like we're getting flashbacks to this first match that we saw today, but there's a lot of ways that Brendan can deal with this in order to break the substitute. Looking at the options that he has, you could go for Earth Power, um, you could even go for Muddy Water Accuracy Drops if you really want, but Brendan's playing a more defensive game here to be able to stall out this Dondoso and also go for uh, the loaded dice uh, bullet seed here from this brute bonnet. Love this too, trying to cover for any option, double hit with whether it wants to terrestrialize, you will do some super effective damage, whether it doesn't, you'll do some super effective damage, and it will be the terrestrialization into this deal. So the bullet seed not going to be doing as much, it's a little bit of a different story here for the earth power. So just making sure you can try and get rid of the substitute as much as possible. You don't want a Pokemon to really sit behind that for too long and do whatever it wants. Earthquake, though, these Pokemon are going to take this quite well. The Gastronom being brought just a little bit below half, but we go Bullet Seed. At this point, it's just how much damage can be done to be breaking this substitute. Yeah, it, it is a little bit tougher to be able to get through Ashton's build of this Dondozo, but you have forced out the terrestrialization from his side of the field, and it's actually putting him in a bit of a tough spot if he's not able to keep the Arcanine in check. Arcanine now with the Flare Blitz is able to deal super effective damage to the Dondozo, the Iron Hands, and the Golden Go. And if you're going to be able to break the substitute here, especially with the Earth Power, that's another way that you can keep this Dondozo in check, and the substitute has faded already. Yeah, so that was a turn that was dedicated to breaking it, but the two Pokemon having enough power, you're covering for either option of the terrestrialization or not. Now you're free to be able to go off, as well as being able to bring in this Arcanine to actually properly intimidate it, since it's not going to be hidden behind this substitute anymore. So just ways to make sure that this Dondozo is as impactful as as little as you can. Make sure that it can't be running away with games that we have been able to see over the competition. Yeah, so Arcanine's gonna get an Intimidate drop here, and if Ashton is gonna go for the Earthquake, maybe Arcanine is able to get a critical survival with that attack drop, but it's still gonna be super effective damage, and Arcanine was already low enough. Hopefully that Intimidate drop is, is plenty here for Brendan to really keep moving on with the game plan, but Crunch also being able to get some nice damage in for that Dondozo. Even if Arcanine went down, you could see just how little that was doing to the Brute Bonnet, and I feel like making sure that the Gastronaut is in a position that 
you are not taking too much damage and keep going for those recovers while then throwing in a earth power too to make sure the substitute doesn't get out of hand is so nice. The substitute will go back out. It'll be a crunch and then followed up with the earth power to make sure that this is not doing too much. The crunch won't be enough. So we will have to wait one more turn here with the recover, but still at this point, the Don Dozo, I feel like there's just so much to ask from it. Yeah, and it's on a timer as well. So one of the things that Brendan is playing for here is just to be able to survive through the Don Dozo's earthquakes has been doing a great job of keeping those in check and the amount of damage that it's doing. But also, you're really trying to force Ashton into a position to use the rest and Chesto Berry combination in order to make sure that this Don Dozo can survive. What I really like about this too is the crunch into recover oh. and then crunch again. You're breaking the substitute with the crunch, so no damage happens, but then it allows the earth power at full power to be hitting into a non-substituted Don Dozo. And that is going to remove for this Pokemon from play once and for all. We've talked about the importance of how things are targeted into with the Don Dozo, and even more so with that substitute. And I think that was just so well done. Yeah, one of the things that Brendan is actually uh, kind of struggling against now is that it's the natural speed of the Pokemon on Ashton's side that's going to be in Ashton's favor. You do have the Tatsugiri that's still out on the field now. It has a Choice Scarf available, so it could go for very fast Icy Winds or Muddy Waters, or if you're really trying to get a quick knockout here, then you could go for the Draco Meteor or the Terra Blast as other offensive options. And then bringing the Golden Go back in with the Choice Specs, it can end up going for something else, and this Rage Powder might not end up being effective when you look at the spread damage options available, but it's just the Draco Meteor here for a nice knockout. It's going to be a critical hit onto the Brute Bonnet and taking it out. So it does protect the Gastrodon from that one hit. And now Golden Go, the Shadow Ball, will be able to target into the Gastrodon, not keeping it safe from that. Living on 2 HP and now can go for Recover. What a critical survival there for the Gastrodon, but it does feel like it's on borrowed time a little bit. The Sylveon is going to come in and put some pressure onto that Tatsugiri, and also knowing that the Golden Go has locked into the Shadow Ball, Brendan has a lot of information to play around with uh, if Ashton decides to not go for a pivot here. Tatsugiri has had its special attack dropped, so there's a couple of options that Ashton can go for for a quick switch, unless he sees the opportunity to really end up go for a big knockout onto the Sylveon. But as it stands, Make It Rain is going to be off the board, so you're looking at Iron Hands getting a chance to come back in here and get a pivot. And having both Pokemon on Ashen's side locked into respective move, moves, thanks to the different items with this Choice Specs, with this Choice Spark, give you so much information because now you know how every turn is going to be playing out. It's just whether it's that targeting. So Gastrodon will be protecting this turn, and that means the Shadow Ball does absolutely nothing. Now Sylveon with the Hyper Voice, plenty to be taking out the Katsukiri at this point. And even just that little bit of chip into the other spot is going to be nice. Yeah, so Golden Go getting a little bit of damage, but it's really about the Throat Spray that just boosted that Sylveon special attack. And because of how long this Gastrodon has been able to hang on, you look at Iron Hands now, and Brendan could really put himself into a situation where this Iron Hands is going to be very ineffective. It has access to Wild Charge and Volt Switch, which are not going to do damage to this Gastrodon. And that's also why Brendan has been very careful using a Terrastalization here on the Sylveon, because it is that water type and so good with just holding that out. The fake out into the Sylveon. It detected this turn, so not going to be doing anything with that. The Shadow Ball again into the Gastron. We saw how much it did last time. Ooh. This time not hanging on, and it is going to be going down. So it's just going to be the Sylveon at this point in a 2v1 situation. Yeah, I mean, since the Iron Hands went for the fake out here, maybe the close combat's going to be able to help pick it up if you do see the Golden Ghost Shadow Ball chip into this slot. It's a good amount with that. And now the Wild Charge to back it up. Not enough for a KO. Sylveon brought so low into the red. At this point, the Hyper Voice, you're just not getting enough mileage out of it. The Golden Go, I mean, even just a sliver of health here with the Shadow Ball is going to be more than enough. So Sylveon just not being able to put in that mileage needed at this point. And that's going to be Ashton Ox to take game one. Really nice play there coming through from Ashton, especially when the Dondozo got knocked out there. Was still able to make use of the Tatsugiri without the Dondozo. And, of course, that Iron Hand's actually putting in more work than we've seen so far in Series 2. 
even with the Volt Switch there, it's our Wild Charge, excuse me, it's doing a lot of damage. And unfortunately, Sylveon, while a bit bulky, just wasn't doing enough there to survive. Gastrodon, though, pretty, pretty big star there for the team, just couldn't get through that final Shadow Ball. Yeah, and just a weird situation because you need to try and do the damage that you can. Then the Golden Ghost, sure, it's not going to be hitting it into the Sylveon with the Make It Rain, but at the same time, you're just not dealing enough damage back at any point in time to really be able to deal with it. So it just keeps consistently chunking you down with a single target, even if it just ignored the Sylveon for a hot second. The Sylveon was ignored onto the Iron Hands, but at that situation, you're just outsped and outclassed. Like, what can you do? Yeah, and Iron Hands is carrying the Assault Fest too, so it was way tankier on Ashton's side, only having those attacking moves and also resisting the special attack damage coming in from the Sylveon. So a really great way for Ashton to play around for the end game and recognizing that he doesn't necessarily have to go for the pivot here. Golden Go locking into the Shadow Ball is going to be plenty to at least soften up those targets for the Iron Hands to put in the rest of the work. But uh, Brendan here, I, I feel like played the way that he needed to. It was just more, you know, was that Shadow Ball a role in that situation? Or does he even lean on the Trick Room mode? Just looking at the fact that Ashton actually didn't bring the Tailwind and still had faster Pokemon. It was pretty fast team lock in. Oh, but I'm not going to spoil that. We're going to we're gonna hold on to that information <laughs> a little bit longer. I was like, hang on. Uh, no, wait a second. I'm looking at the wrong screen here. But uh, no, it'll be interesting to see because I feel like just in general, it's a little bit of a tough matchup. I feel like just on Ashton's end, even when Brandon was doing things right, like you're like, oh yeah, the Don Dozo, you deal with that. And that's so good and that's so cool. And then all of a sudden, those the Don Dozo has gone and the rest of the team is able to just put in that work because there's nothing you can really do to be breaking that. So just a tough situation. Now, it is going to be the Sylveon yet again making an appearance next to the Arcanine and Golden Goat and Iron Hands on the other side. Yeah, so a run back of this game number one lead coming out from both players, but it comes down to what they end up doing on this very first turn. It was a quick swap for Brendan for the Arcanine to be able to preserve that Intimidate for later, but unfortunately that Arcanine still ended up going down uh, very quickly. And so maybe at this point, you're hoping to get a bit more of that damage out when you're not really looking at any either the Iron Hand or the Golden Go really being a threat here, but you can still make sure that you keep that damage in check with the Snarl and then also see what happens here with the Sylveon going for some damage. Yeah, because Intimidate is such a strong ability, but at the same time, that is a slot that you are pivoting and not really doing anything with. So sometimes you can lose a little bit of aggression with it. So keeping it in this time, I love. And it will be a first turn to Rassalization, bringing up that water type Sylveon, making sure that a Make It Rain is not going to be doing the most. Fake out into the Arcanine will make sure that it doesn't get to do anything this time around. But no Make It Rain, instead a Shadow Ball. Arcanine can be an issue in trying to get rid of it as fast as possible. It does survive, but really low in the red. Yeah, Arcanine here. I mean, Ashton has identified that this Arcanine can be a big problem for the team, either limiting the damage output of this Iron Hands, or also maybe if he has the Dondozo in the back again, then you're still getting those Intimidate drops. But now that it's so low, the preservation of this Arcanine is way more limited than it was in that very first game. Sylveon also getting set up here with that Throat Spray will be able to do a bit more damage there with the Hyper Voice, but Brendan's going to play it a bit safe here and it's an immediate switch out here from Ashton. You dropped the special attack there with the make it, uh, the sh well, you're, I guess you don't want to lock yourself into the Shadow Ball and Dondozo now making an appearance. Definitely, and at this point too, the Sylveon not going to be going for one of those powerful Hyper Voices. Instead, trying to make sure it stays safe as Arcanine hires off a Will-O-Wisp into the Iron Hands, making sure that later on, and even just right now, it's not going to be able to do quite as much as it needs. The Vol Switch making an appearance once again, but into the Sylveon is going to be a wasted turn and not being able to get that pivot either. Yeah, Iron Hands is now a little bit more kept in check here with the will o -Wisp, so it might not be nearly as much of a problem heading into the end game. You still have to deal with the Dondozo, though, and Ashton has the opportunity to go for the Tatsugiri switch in if he decides he wants to start powering up that Dondozo, or if he even brought it in the back. Uh, so it gives you an opportunity here to maybe see if you can make the most out of this Arcanine or get a switch in for something that's going to be a bit more of a resist in the back. Sylveon, though, pretty safe here. You aren't going to be taking too much damage, especially if that Dondoso goes for a wave crash. And the nice pivot here, too, will also help to be able to keep this group on it in play. 
Preserve and Intimidate for later. Bring the Brute Bonnet out. And that is going to be a Volt Switch yet again into the Sylveon. Super effective damage, but look at just how little that did after the Intimidate that was earlier on in the first turn of the game, as well as that Burn doing so little, but at least you'll be able to get rid of that minus one, even if the burn sticks around. A Volt Switch into the Tatsugiri, though, will be able to go for that commander and start trying to get this Dondoza set up. Yeah, even that little bit of chip damage there onto the Sylveon could be a big payoff later here for Ashton, and you didn't have to use a turn to just get a raw switch in for that Tatsugiri. So Dondozo is nicely set up. Brendan making a very nice switch here for the Brute Bonnet coming in, and that's very little damage onto the Brute Bonnet, but Sylveon also going to be able to do some nice damage here onto the Dondozo too. I would love to say that it was nice damage, and maybe I guess it could be considering the Don Dozo does have all of these boosts, but that just still feels so weevil and so weak in comparison to what Sylvia on the Piper Voice plus that third turn group could really do at this point. But hey, I guess any amount of chip you can get onto the Don Dozo helps out. Yeah, and you also are able to keep the Sylveon in play for later if you are able to get the knockout onto, onto the Dondozo like Brendan did in that very first game. Then you have a nice way to clean up that Tatsugiri 2 before it gets out of hand and is able to do some damage here. So Arcanine coming back in, gets an Intimidate drop here onto the Dondozo to make that damage output a bit more manageable, but Brendan is going to lose that Arcanine this turn. At least you get the Intimidate before you go and you get a free swap the Brute Bonnet yet again. It's just going to be taking this hit so well. And because of the fact that it's not an order up, it's not the Taps of Yuri that will let you get that attack, it means that these attack drops are going to be sticking around. So even that one, bringing it to just a plus one overall, can just be so impactful. And now the Gastronaut can make its way out. So you can really try and start putting some pressure onto the Don Dozo, being able to check it either way. Yeah. Here, I mean, Brendan's playing the same game that he did last time. You do have to focus down the Dondozo. That's the only thing you can even target on the field right now. But you also have two Pokemon that are resisting this Earthquake damage. And so it's not going to be dealing nearly as much. And also, Ashton hasn't had a chance to set up the Substitute yet. So looking at how much damage this Bullet Seed is doing with the loaded dice as well to ensure the four, at least four hits here, this Dondozo won't have the chance to go for that setup. Yeah, not going for that substitute whatsoever and hit five times with that bullet seed. Now it'll just be the earth power and it will be enough to be picking up this KO and leaving Tatsugiri without a ship. Yeah, Tatsugiri is going to be able to come back out here, but as the scar Choice Scarf is its held item, could go for some super effective Icy Winds. Doesn't necessarily need that speed control, but it's still going to be able to help get these targets into a range where this Golden Go can pick them off. It does have that Make It Rain, so you could go for more spread damage even still. Um, but we saw how much that Shadow Ball was able to do, and there's also a Thunderbolt available, which you don't want to hit into the Gastron, but maybe maybe not even to the Sylveon either. At this point, the Gastrodon's sticking around, but the boot, Brute Bonnet is not as Sylveon. It's going to swap back into the field with that Water Terret pipe. And it's going to be the Terrestrialization over onto Ashton's end as well. It is going to be that Gold Dango at this point. And with that Steel Terret type, could just be going for your damage at this point. Yeah, this is a great way to ensure that you've got double stab here onto a Make It Rain. and. Maybe it makes you a bit more vulnerable, but you were already vulnerable there to the Gastrodon. It's going to go for Protect, though. An Icy Wind. It'll just be that little bit of chip damage all around. If it could hit, there, of course, there is a Protect, but the miss onto the Sylveon as well. No drop, no little bit of damage. The Sylveon now will be taking the Make It Rain. This is a lot of damage coming on, even if it's not very effective hit. Golden Go, especially with a Steel Terra type, is just too powerful. Yeah, and it also makes up a little bit for the fact that you're dropping your special attack after every Make It Rain. But Brendan, at this point, wants to preserve that Gastrodon to be able to get some super effective damage into the Golden Go. And that miss on the Icy Wind really wasn't that important since we saw that the Golden Go got the knockout anyway. But yeah, Brute Bonnet here, at least it was preserved for the end game, has the opportunity to go for Spore as long as it's able to hang on. And Tatsugiri is locked in right now to that Icy Wind. And both Gastrodon and Brute Bonnet right now. That speed control is not so important, but that chip damage could be. Especially, too, since you are going to be consistently getting that chip damage on both. And neither of them necessarily appreciates that hit anyways. Like, that's a decent amount of chip after you've taken all effects. That it is just 
icy win. And it's going to be that chip that could really make this difference with that Make It Rain. Of course, every turn it just does a little bit and a little bit less damage, but it'll be enough to be picking up the KO on the Brute Bonnet and the Gastrodon doesn't look too great right now. No, it can go for a cover here, so it will be able to restore some of the HP that it's lost over the game. And as Golden Go is losing those special attack boosts, um, you're, you're kind of looking at putting Ashton in a position to have to switch it out here, and you can bring that Iron Hands back in. Tatsugiri still locked into that Icy Wind, and, and Gastrodon's going to be able to hang on here and maybe even go for another recover, and Iron Hands is already burned. Yeah, and go in for the muddy water here. Yeah, you're not really dealing too much with the accuracy Ooh. drop. These are some end games that we get to see with this Gastrodon. It is going to hit that on the Iron Hand. So yeah, the Iron Hand's already not doing the most damage because of the fact that it's burnt. But now all you have to you have to worry about the damage from the Icy Wind, and maybe the Iron Hand doesn't hit. <laughs> yeah, like uh, that poor Iron Hand. It already had some trouble, uh, but it now it's even more trouble here. But the close combat will connect. Not Gastrodon's enough. hang up. Yeah, the burn, the power of the burn there. The power of the burn and Gastrodon, of course. Gastrodon players know this all so well, making sure that whenever things get a little serious for you, that you are going to be going for that recover. And Iron Hands, I mean, this burn is just taking care of it by itself. It's slowly and slowly getting chipped down. You can keep going for these recovers and get yourself set. Yeah, I think Brendan also is just seeing the amount of damage that, that Iron Hands did. Uh, Ashton's going to take the opportunity here to pivot the Tatsugiri out, bring the Golden Go back in, just seeing that the Iron Hands has just not been enough. But this does buy Brendan a very valuable turn to be able to get the recover up and bar a critical hit here. So another recover here is going to feel really good. It's getting to the point, though, especially with the fact that there is that steel Terra type on the Golden Go. If the Gastrodon can really survive two hits from the opposing side and be able to be in a position to even go for another recover or anything else, well, the special attack on the Golden Go goes down, but it doesn't even have to lock into a make it rain. We got to see just how powerful those Shadow Balls were by itself, and then you don't have to worry about anything. This is a really critical turn for Brendan here, and he has to call this right. This Earth Power going into the Golden Go would give him an opportunity to be able to win this game. Uh, and so you want to be able to knock out the Golden Go here. Tatsugiri does get switched in in favor of the Iron Hands. And uh, if he's able to hang on through the Shadow Ball, then you could get the knockout here, and he does hang on. And now Earth Power back. It's not going to be enough for the KO at this point. Now Gastrodon is so low, and it's just so slow at this point, too. So now both of the things on the other side are going to outspeed, and Draco Meteor is going to hit. Take care of this Gastron and Ashton Cox moving on with 2-0 record. What a great performance there from Brendan. This was a really tough matchup, especially not having the best access to setting up that trick room. And Ashton as well, just that positional game that he played for both game one and game two to really make sure that he had a win condition for the end game was also very neat to see. And that's also why Ashton has been one of those players like Brendan Zhang that has just been at the top of the, the VGC player list of and kind of the players that you would like to keep an eye out for. Yeah, and really with that Dondozo Tatsugiri as well on Ashton's end, I mean, we've talked about the fact that we can see the pieces separately, and the Dondozo, I felt like it was taken care of decently well, but then the Tatsugiri is left, and having that Choice Scarf and being able to go for that fast damage, sure, the Icy Wind did very little, but the thing is, is it was doing enough, and that's what mattered. And the Gastrodon, I mean, it was in a constant state of, okay, I need to be going for recovered, I need these clutch survivals, and that's kind of borrowed time at that point. Like, there's only so long you can be doing that. Gastron's pretty cool. There has been some insane end games. It just you can't do it all. Yeah, and I think that's another thing that Ashton did really well was identifying the bigger threats on uh, Brendan's four and making sure that those were getting knocked out really early. Unfortunately, Arcanine just really not showing up in those games one or two. The Intimidate drops are really nice, but it still wasn't enough to be able to keep the special attackers in check. And then also, yes, Iron Hands did get the burn. It did get those Intimidate drops, but it was still able to help keep that Gastrodon low enough that the rest of the Pokemon in Ashton's party could get the cleanup. 
Yeah, and it was just really good targeting from Ashton, especially in that second game as well. I felt like the first game, well, not even I felt like, the first game, the Arcanine did a lot of swapping, so it wasn't a chance to really target it down and take care of it. And in that second game, as soon as the Arcanine's like, hey, I'm going to stay on the field and do things, it was instantly targeted into to where it just wasn't able to stick around for too long. And considering how well Arcanine really matched into a lot of things on Ashton's side, that's really good. Make sure you take care of the threat, identify it early, and the Brute Bonnet and Gastrodon, when those are left in the end game and your Pokemon are looking pretty good against it, like, you're looking good. True. All right, I think still we, we saw a really good positional game there from Brendan, playing to the outs of just maybe trying to outlast. And also, getting the KO onto the Dondozo does feel pretty good. At least you're taking down that uh, behemoth of a Pokemon, and it makes it a little bit easier to help try to clean up the game. But uh, sometimes it just doesn't fall in your favor. No, at least we got to see some uh, cool Pokemon, even if we didn't get to see the Roaring Moon over on Ashen's end. I mean, the other Pokemon were just so strong. And it's interesting, too, to see the Golden Go being able to be used to such great avail, even though that doesn't have the traditional partners that we got to see in Series 1. Because even with the Make It Rains dropping that special attack, being able to still have that power to position it or go for those really strong Shadow Balls, I feel like we talked so much about Make It Rain. For a good reason, it's really strong that sometimes Shadow Ball gets neglected to be talked about. But that is a really strong move from a really strong Pokemon. That's why Choice Specs has been one of those Pokemon. Any of the Choice items, Choice Specs, Choice Scarf on Golden Go have been really popular as of late because we also had access to some coverage options there on the Golden Go, looking at Thunderbolt um, as one of those that can really help to shore up another weakness there. Uh, and also when you Terrasalize to that Steel type, you're making up a little bit for the special attack drops that you're getting just by having the double same type attack bonus. Yeah, well, it is time now to hear a little bit more from the winner of that match and head over to the lounge for an interview. Thank you so much, guys. I'm joined with our winner from the last round, Ashton. Ashton, we sat down. You said it's, uh, it's been a little while since you top cut an mm -hmm. event. Uh, obviously, moving on, not just through top 32, but top 16 as well, making it mm -hmm. top eight. How's that one feeling for you? Well, it's kind of strange, honestly. I, uh, I, I'm just going to rough ballpark. You know, it's been about like a year of events. Mm -hmm. so that I haven't had a top cut in. I feel like I've been looking for that um, neutral luck. I've just been, I just feel like I've had like two bad luck games. You know, that's enough. That's enough. You get two bad luck games, you're out. That's the end of that. And so it was, it was really cool coming into this. Like a lot of me and my friends did a lot, way more preparation than we'd ever done uh, for an event. And so it was really cool coming in. Uh, unfortunately, one of my friends actually ate two missed cut. I had to play him in the last Ooh. round. I know I got paired up to him actually. Oh, so okay. the bittersweet is I won, I made it in. He missed it 8-2. I, I felt so bad. But uh, I'm happy I'm here. Uh, I really, honestly, I, I thought I was going to lose in top 32. I, I really, I played a guy who beat me in Swiss, and I was like, okay, I think it's over. I, it's cool that I cut, but I think it's over. I didn't even look at who I could play. So then I saw I was facing Brendan, and I was like, oh, this is going to be such a good game. And uh, I'm really, really excited to play it. Obviously, it was, I think it was a really good game. So yeah, it's, it's great to be here. Um, I, you know, I kind of, I guess I got complacent with just being like, oh, I can go 7-3, I'll be okay. But I feel like this reignited a fire. So hopefully this will carry on through the season. Yeah, I mean, it's lovely to see you back at the top tables. Obviously, mm -hmm. you've been there before at events, big and small. Uh, so top 32, uh, mm -hmm. obviously you get through that, you get through 16, uh, focusing on eight right now. But uh, yeah. first time we've, we've had a look at you for the weekend. Let's talk about the team. I mean, you're one of the most creative team builders, I think it's safe to say, uh, out there. You have been for, mm -hmm. for quite some time. Uh, I've kind of been trying to get a read. Obviously, we, we had Series 2 for a short time. Uh, mm -hmm. How'd you settle on, on what you bought? Well, it's very interesting. I don't know if you specifically heard my interview I did at San Diego I, with Joe. I actually have to bring up the Claude Zion yes, thing. Yes. I, I want to get to that. Uh -huh. um, you, you said it was easily counterable. Um, well, I said, I said it was like the way to beat Dozo. So it sounded like I would be being like, oh, yeah, Dozo's bad and all. Um, and I don't think Dozo's bad, but Claude Zion does beat it. If I fought a Claude Zion this weekend, it was over. I literally lost. But I'm still sticking by that. Claude Zion's great. Claude Zion's great. Um, but yeah, I, I went through it, and I'm all the most Dozo compositions we've seen have been like, I'm going to support this Pokemon, and if it, if it goes away, you know, if that goes away, um, that's the end. And I feel like what I've done is I've created more of a balanced Dozo, where I, unfortunately, it wasn't streamed in top 32. I brought Dozo no Tatsu. All, okay. all three games that it won me. Yeah, okay. We've because seen, we've I seen use the it reverse. as a good water type, yeah. Yeah, we've seen the, the Tatsugiri no Don Dozo. Yeah. Uh, so what, if you're going to play a game like that, what makes you go with just Pure Dondozo, no commander. Yeah, well, I have um, max attack, max attack adamant. My game plan is either Dozo is going to be just a good water type. Water types are good. Mm -hmm. People Terra water. They want water. There aren't a lot of them in the format, but they're really good. And so Dozo's just like, if I want three of my others and I'm like, I really don't want Roaring Moon, 
You know, I'll be like, well, Dozo's not bad. It's not a bad Pokemon. And I think the way I run it with just max attack is the way to go if you want to have it be versatile like that. Because I feel like I kind of made a very balanced team. You can, I can lead anything. I probably have led every single combination of Pokemon okay. over this tournament. And that's just what the team is designed to do, though. It's designed to be so flexible. Where I feel like a lot of Dozo teams are, they're very solid, you mm -hmm. know, but they're like glass. When you, when you shatter them, it's gone. And okay. so I feel like my team is a lot more durable and flexible in that way. Okay, so. you mentioned another Pokemon. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know, in, in Joe's words to me, you, you know, you've, you've betrayed him. Mm. You've upset him by bringing the Dondozo. But you can redeem uh, yourself. I okay. promise you, you can redeem yourself. Okay, okay. So this one's just for Joe. Tell us more about your Roaring Moon composition and why that Ooh. Pokemon, because he's a huge fan. Uh, oh, okay. He bends okay. my ear about it all the time. He's like, let's do a Roaring Moon Sick, team. Sick, yeah. So now you can make it up to Joe and explain why and how. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so uh, one of the main ideas, and I'll, I'll tell you this, it seems like it's a Dozo team, right? I'll be honest, it's more of a Goldengo team. Okay. You know, in, in theory. Um, the, what, I, what I sat there and I thought is like, Tailwind plus Specs Goldengo, you know, it's something we saw in Series 1, and it's still great, as, as we've seen. It's just mm -hmm. still a great Pokemon. Um, and I was like, I don't really want Talonflame. I, I don't really want Murkrow. I have Dozo. I'm not going to run Murkrow. I, you know. I agree with no Murkrow. Right. 100%. Yeah, and I was like, I want it to do a little more damage, but I also want it to be setting up before Fluttermane mm -hmm. and like bundle and stuff. I mean, it, it doesn't if they're booster, because I'm, I'm speed booster energy. So the idea is that I have a Goldengo that outruns uh, bundle and Fluttermane, and I can go with that lead and Tailwind make it rain. And so I, I thought of it as only the only viable Tailwind setter that's not Talonflame for this kind of composition. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's really good. Now, the one thing I would do is I wish I had Breaking Swipe. Okay, that's, your, that's your regret coming mm -hmm. into this. I have Throat Chop. It's done nothing, absolutely nothing. So <laughs> Breaking Swipe would have won me both of my Swiss losses. Yeah, and it's like, I, it's, you know, hindsight's 2020, but mm -hmm. uh, it's been really good to me. Yeah, Roaring Moon, Terra Flying, Acrobatics, so good. Acrobatics just reminds me of previous formats, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, haha, we use we use the item and then guess uh -huh. what? We're gonna we're gonna do the damage like that. Well, it's even great because some people they're like, oh, you switched out your Roaring Moon, no more speed boost. I'm like, I still get a full power acrobatics. Oh yeah. Like I I don't need the speed always. I can still hit very very hard. And uh, the other thing is flying coverage, really good for Dozo. Mm -hmm. You know, getting rid of those Amoonguses, those Bonnets. I didn't have to bring it here because uh, Bonnets also weak to fighting. In yep. case I ever had, I have Iron Hands for that. But uh, yeah, Roaring Moon, Goldengo, I think that's the way to go. If you're gonna run Roaring Moon, either that or like a Dragon Dance could be kind of cool. Okay. Yeah, Dragon a, Dance a, is pretty nice. A different pivot, but you know. Yeah, I, I don't mind two it. sides, different sides. Yeah, and that's actually something that the guys have been talking about this weekend that, you know, and a number of people I spoke to have said these Paradox Pokemon, obviously they came in, they, they shook up the game. There's like multiple ways to play them. Is that kind of the same oh, yeah. experience or do you feel like there's some that are just a little bit locked in? Yeah, I think in my opinion, the only one that's like most locked in is Fluttermane, because mm -hmm. like you really want max speed, because if you don't, you lose to other Fluttermane. You know, oh, yeah. that's the thought process. So it's like you really have to have like a pretty straight up spread. Maybe your specs, maybe your sash, but you you can't you can't go too crazy with that. Now I fought somebody in Swiss. They had a oh, which which one is it? It's it's the uh, past Volcarona. You know, which, Slitherwing. Slitherwing. They had a Slitherwing. Okay, tell me and about it, Slitherwing it, because it, it had this Will O Wisp, my... Morning Sun, with Grass Terra. It, I'm like that beats my Dozo. Yeah, that, that does. Thing, I was like, this is the most innovative use of a Paradox Pokemon I've seen. Because, like, I saw in Team Preview, I was like, ah, oh, whatever. I look at the sheet, I'm like, I can't bring Dozo. I, I just can't. Like, it literally <laughs> hard checks it. Same as Cloudzart. Cloudzart's better, but, you know. Yeah, it, very innovative. I was really cool. To see, it was really cool to see that. I It opened my mind a little bit, you know, to see some of these, these new uses. There is, I will tell you, I'm not going to give it away exactly, but I do have two of my Paradoxes have very weird EV spreads. Okay. Very weird EV spread. So you trained them just very uniquely. Yes, absolutely. It has won me uh, three rounds strictly off of the EV spreads. My opponents, well, there was one time where he, he literally looked at me and he's like, I wonder if you live this. And he didn't get to do that because I just knocked out his Pokemon first. Ah, so you're saying that you're, you're really leaning into the fast and offensive side of... Possibly, possibly. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense if you put it with a Tailwind, like, let's really yeah, go fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's uh, it's been really cool because I think, you know, I love Open Team Sheet. I think it's amazing. I still think that people aren't exploring the options you can use, like EV spreads, that will catch people off guard. You know, it's like, yes, you could have had, I don't know, Explosion Garganackle, and that would have caught people off guard before Open Team Sheet. You know what I mean? But now it's like, I have a weird EV spread that lives stuff or outspeed stuff, and that'll win, that'll still get you a game. It'll still have you that upper hand. So I think that's another thing I want to see from people. Is I feel like we're just like, oh, it's open sheet. I'm gonna I'm gonna lock into this like standard stuff, standard spreads, just because everyone sees it. But it's like there's some there's some creativity we can still.
we'll dig into. That's good. I mean, yeah. thinking about your, your career and obviously games I've, I've watched with you in the past at various mm -hmm. events, I know that the creativity is there from you. You know yeah. how to play around it. And I'm, I'm honestly really glad that you're, you know, you're finding a way to, you know, obviously the moves are given up, the terror is given up, mm -hmm. but the way you train your Pokemon is, is so unique. Mm -hmm. And if that's where you're getting the creativity, like let's see mm -hmm. more of that from the, from the guys at home. Um, Absolutely. Just in general, I mean, how, You've always seemed to do well in the years where we, we bounce into a new game, a new generation. How are you feeling, kind of on the whole, about Scarlet Violet but across Series 1 and the Stacey oh, yes. Series 2? I'm going to say it. I did not like Sword and Shield. Okay. This much just my take. Nothing wrong with, like, the game, but, like, the formats. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't. Dynamax wasn't my favorite. I'm sure I've said that on stream before. I just didn't like Dynamax. All right. Um, and it was just to a point where... It's not like a, a wild take to not enjoy that of mechanic. Course, yeah. it's like, some people really loved it, some people really didn't. And yeah, and fine. it's like, I didn't judge if they liked it, but I was just like, I personally will not like it. And so I think that like Terra, not only is it a better mechanic, it's more balanced, it's more like fluid. Mm -hmm. um, the open team sheet makes it great too, because it's like, with Dynamax, it was like, okay, they led, they led Togekiss Tyranitar. What's happening? You know what I mean? Yep. Back in that gen. But now I'm like, oh, it's an offensive Tyranitar, it's a follow me, you know? And I, I feel like with Terra's, it just, it's, it's brought back something that I've, I've really enjoyed, which is like, I guess less randomness or like, you know, randomness is not the right word, but I, you know what I'm getting at is like, I think that Terra's is, is a great mechanic. I think that uh, the decks we got is pretty good. I, I know that I'm personally, uh, I am a fan of GS Cup formats with the mm -hmm. Legends. Um, so I, I, didn't, I didn't dislike Series 12 so much last okay. back then, but uh, I, I kind of am looking forward to that as it goes forward too with yep. the GS Cup rules coming out here, because I think this is like a better game. Then we can have GS Cup, it'll be awesome. It'll be so cool. Yeah, there's so much coming forward mm -hmm. in the next few years. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, the localized format, I think we've, we've got like a really strong start here. I think there's, oh, yeah. there's definitely plenty to play. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of meta developments to get mm. through. Thinking forward, obviously, you know, we've got Australia coming up very, very soon, OCIC. Yeah. Then we come right back here for another regional uh, mm -hmm. in the US. Where are you kind of expecting that, that meta game to go? Because we, we jumped mm. in, there was a lot of discourse on, on social media about, you know, what's the best team? People are obviously yeah. pitching for it. If you had to make a prediction, uh, where do you feel like we may end up? Um, so what I would say is I think uh, one of the interesting things, Dozo, back to Dozo. Oh, I, I, I can I, talk about it. We're good. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I looked at it, and the reason I brought it is I was like, okay, it's everywhere Series 1. And then I played on the ladder. I'm like, no one's using it. Like, everyone is kind of writing it off as, like, Series 1 is done. We've got Bundle, you know, for the freeze-dry. It's like, Dozo's gone. Dozo is out of here. And it was very interesting to show up and see that there were a lot of Dozo. And not, like, a lot, a lot. Not, like, nothing like San Diego, where there were so many. Um, but there's still a good amount. And I feel like going forward, it's going to pick back up. That's my take. Honestly, Dozo's going to pick back up. And I feel like that's where we're going to see the innovations. That's what we're going to see, uh, and not specifically the Slitherwing, but we'll see those sets, you know, those sets that are like, I am a standard Pokemon, but I'm deviating to become more adapted to the meta. And yeah. I think having this tournament and then being able to go to Australia and they can see this and be like, oh yeah, Dozo is picking up. Maybe I need to have a little more creative stuff to deal with it or, you know, just even a different team choice. Um, I do think Dozo is going to pick up and I think, I don't know, maybe, I feel like Iron Hands is so popular, but I think it's going to go up too. Honestly. It, I mean, it's hard to get it to go up, right? Over I know, I know. Over 50% of players bought it. I'd say yeah. we had like a mixed bag viewing it on stream, mm -hmm. but it was definitely the, the Paradox Pokemon that a lot of people mm -hmm. uh, gravitated to. Um, yeah. The other thing with Dondoza, I think, to, to mention is, and I don't know how you can kind of feel about this. Obviously, you team build with a bunch of people. It was almost like a sense of shame in bringing it, mm. right? Like some people didn't want to be caught yep. by, you know, this <laughs> obvious trick. And then we got all these new toys, these new water types oh, yeah. that could fill the role as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm a Pala fan myself. Ah, uh, uh, yes. And I think like that, obviously, you're competing for that water type slot. So, mm -hmm. you know, Bundle comes in. Bundle coming in was a lot there, yeah, because it's like it, it is a good water type and it beats the other water types. Like, yeah. how, how are you supposed to pick a different water type when Bundle is there and beats other water types? Like, uh, it's just so good. Well, I mean, I'd argue that Palafin's just intrinsically cooler. Oh, it's way cooler, absolutely. Yeah. I, I just like Bundle so much. The design bothers me and the way its head like pops off, it's so strange. Are you not a fan of the. No, 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 no. So if you had to go from the, the Paradox Pokemon from either Scarlet or Violet, you'll go. Oh, yeah. Go in Scarlet? Definitely go in the past Pokemon with Scarlet, yeah. Well, I think that they're so cool. I think it's. Uh, they remind me of dinosaurs, you know. In, in, not all of them, but a lot of them remind me of dinosaurs. I think, and I think dinosaurs are so cool. Um, so it's like, yeah, they, they pull it to the past. It's like familiar Pokemon that we all love. And uh, yeah, the iron stuff's a little weird. Even though I have iron hands, he's yeah. all right. He's okay. He can he can hang out with the rest of my team. But 
not the others. So you've picked the, the Paradox Pokemon mm -hmm. from Scala. Now my challenge to you is, you know, mm. what would it take to get you to build a Slitherwing team for a tournament? Oh, Would, okay. would you take that? Because that's something I think is one of the coolest designs. I think it's the best. It is pretty sweet. Can yeah. I get you to take up that mantle and, and run with a Slitherwing? You know, how about this? How about this? If I win this tournament, okay. which I, again, you know, I'm just a hypothetical world because I, I like making little bets. If I win the tournament, I will roll up to Noxville with Slitherwing. I'll shake on that right now. All right, let me, there it is. Shaking out, shaking out it right here on stream. If Ashton wins. If I win Orlando, I'll do it because I, I'm all for that. And the closer I get to my world's invite, the close, the more I can be like, okay, let's experiment, you know? Yeah. And I, I like it. I like that kind right. of stuff. So absolutely, if I get if I get into a spot where I feel a little more comfortable about making worlds and all that, absolutely. So yeah, I'm sticking to it. I, I appreciate it. that. Thank you mm -hmm. for taking me up on the offer. Absolutely. Uh, pipping away from team building for a second. One yes. Other, one other thing I want to talk about, which I think is really cool. Obviously, I've known you as a player for a very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been performing very well for a number of years, but your family play as well. Mm -hmm. Your sister definitely plays, and I believe your mother plays sometimes as well. Uh, both my sisters and my mom played yesterday. The actually. whole thing. Everybody, so, yeah. So how is that playing as like a family? Oh, it's wonderful. I, I definitely, you know, shout out to my mom for taking me to the, the first Pokemon events. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2011 to 2013, we only went to US Nationals. We drove five hours, we went one day, and we drove home that night. You know, it was, it was, a, it was a trek, and then she would do all the driving, and we would do the playing, yep. and then all that. And then she, uh, she picked up play more once the locals started coming around, the mid-seasons, the premier challenges, and she would just play at the locals. And then she started getting a little bit better, played at regionals. There was a regional where she started 5-0. My mom I actually started remember 5 this vaguely, I know, yeah. and I started 2-3 at that event. That's the funniest <laughs> part. I was 2-3, my mom was 5-0. It was a whole mixed bag. My sister actually, as well, yesterday, she started 4-2. I was 4-2, she was 4-2. Or 4 1. We were both 4 1. Yeah. And I was just like, she's a higher table than I am. And she didn't <laughs> practice at all. So, like, they've, they've, they've gone off a little bit, not practicing as much. Emma was big in seniors. And she's decided that Masters is a lot more work, which is, you know, Fair so comment. many more players. Yeah. And so she's like, oh, I'll casually play. But she still started 4 1. I think she, uh, she actually, like, 4 3 dropped. It was her birthday yesterday. So she oh, actually was. Happy birthday. Yeah, yesterday. yeah. It's... She was like, I played my seven rounds, I'm tired, I'm out of here. So she yeah. was happy with 4-3 and she just, you know. But still, yeah, really good, you know. We we kind of built together, we were all using Dozo. So my okay. mom, my mom was like, I don't want Dozo. And I was like, fair, fair. But you wouldn't let her take bundles, so. No, 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 no bundle. So are you worried going forward that, you know, maybe, you know, the, the best player in the household's mm. title could slip away from you, or is, are you confident in that? So in that weird situation, last year where the seniors went into Masters, mm -hmm. you know, when they aged up, my sister had more points than I did. I remember, I remember She had more that. points than I did because they got aged up into Masters, and she had like 500 more points than me, and I'm like, I'm never gonna pass her. I'm never gonna pass her. And then she uh, she actually plays Pokémon as well, and she wanted to play at Pokémon Worlds, so she was out of VG standings. Uh, okay. But she played in Pokémon Worlds. Oh, that's awesome. so. She but she was ahead of me. Yeah, she was. I, I was. Everybody was like, she's the better. She's the better in the family, you know. Yeah. And uh, she's definitely not bad, but again, she's not practiced as much. So, um, yeah, I think. Uh, at this point, back when she was practicing, definitely she could have had a shot, but they're not all practicing, so I'm that's hoping right. to hold the title in the family, but you know. Is, maybe that's what fueled you for this year, right? You said you'd had that year off and it had slowed down a little bit, um, you know, and I think maybe, yeah, seeing the standings with your younger sister on top probably oh, what? Did sting a bit. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, it was a lot. Also, the when we uh, when we had to close down for a little bit, the way the standings froze, and I, I was like seventh. I was like that. You know, I had like two years to sit on being seventh. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that motivated me a lot. I was like, I am going to be, I'm going to do better. I'm going to be higher than seventh. You know, because I sat on it for two years. I just couldn't move. Um, obviously, we had no events, no other yeah. influence. But I was, I was like, no, I'm going to do better. I got to be above seventh. So that's, again, why I'm trying to like, win the event, bring Slytherin to Knoxville, win that event, you know, keep it going with all that. <laughs> so the cool thing is when you do obviously take Slytherin to Knoxville, then we can yes. a new challenge. We Absolutely. can get you really digging deep in the Paradox. Pokemon we can keep Pokemon. going. If I if I do that, I'll shake on a win Knoxville thing with a, you know, uh, what's it, uh, Screamtail, you know, some other crazy stuff. I, I think Screamtail's closer than that's fair. That's fair. Because at yeah. least it has like a very clear goal, right? Like yes. it, it's going to play the parish trap to you. Very and, true. Very true. Um, yeah. But uh, I mean, is, is that your? Do you want to? Do you want to sign up for that, or are we going to dig mm. even deeper? <laughs> no, no, not yet. Not yet. Okay. After we'll, we'll, we'll one step at a time. You know, we will go one step at a time. But you know, for locals, I whenever locals do come back, every all holds are you know I'm yeah. going crazy. Yeah. Because I, I like to have fun, and I think using more diverse Pokemon is more fun. Personal take. Um, yeah. But uh, that's what I use locals for. 
test the weird stuff. If it works, bring it to regionals. But uh, definitely have fun with friends and, you know, test okay. out the weird stuff. There's so. plenty of time for experimentation when you get that, that like, lower pressure event. Yeah. So yeah. there's definitely uh, a little more wiggle room in that one. Mm -hmm. so. Fant I mean, fantastic insight. I appreciate talking to you. You're a phenomenal team builder. Um, appreciate but I, it. I do want to let you go. To, yeah, to I got a top, top eight, eight match are you, are to go you, like, to. Tall, no, you seem so relaxed about it, like so blase. I'm st I still haven't even realized I've made top eight at the event. Again, I, I, I think I might have said it at the beginning. I got so like complacent. I'd be like, yeah, I went 7-3. I'm, I can go 7-3, and it's not weird. <laughs> you know, even though like my 2019 season, I, uh, I won, a re I won two regionals and got top eight at US Nats. And like, you know what I mean? I was like, I don't know why I got so complacent with it. I, I kind of just accepted it for a little bit, you know, I like yeah. accepted defeat. And so I, I'm still kind of getting over that mindset. Um, but I obviously, I feel like I can still hang with the best. You know, I've got yeah. no problems there. It's just, uh, yeah, it still doesn't really hit me how, how cool it is to actually make top eight at the largest regional we've ever had ever. Times has so, changed. Yeah. I mean, think about the events back yeah. in 2019. Yes, we still had big turnouts, you know, we had oh, a good of course. 300 people, mm -hmm. but we're looking at like these 780 you know, yeah, play ridiculous. a crazy. 10 rounds, it's absolutely insane. Has that made things, you know, harder, maybe a different mm. approach to, to play a bit longer? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I, I'm just ballparking. We were here for 14 hours yesterday. I took a I took an 8 a.m. run to the venue because our Uber didn't couldn't take us to the venue. I ran a mile and a half to the venue, went eight and two, made it into the top cut of the tournament. Don't take a run before a tournament. I don't I don't recommend that. It wasn't that, good. That's a running theme with people I've spoken to, right? It's like they're saying either they had no sleep or they were really pushing mm -hmm. it. Um, you know, I again I do not condone pushing yourself to the limit at a regional. Uh, but for some players it, it seems to be working. So it's it's yeah. getting tough. I'm not a doctor. It's finding so. that like fine medium between like waking yourself up and totally blowing it all before round nine. You know, when you got ten rounds, like we were after the after they did the like the top cut hack check, we left at eleven thirty last night. That's actually so, nutty. Yeah, That's I know, so I know. different to, and, to back in the day. Yeah, and so the other thing is, I, I didn't really post my uh, resistance online, like who I fought. I knew two of my opponents, I want to say. Oh, wow. I knew two of my opponents, and my resistance was 67%, which all of my opponents went positive. Every single person I played went positive, and I didn't know them. I'm like, people are getting really good. Oh, you yeah. know, like I had two of my opponents made cut. Um, four of them were 7-3. You know what I mean? Like, it wow. was it was just ridiculous. Like. I, you know, the people I played, the, the general player base is all getting really good. And I think that's thanks to a lot of content creators, you know, helping out, especially just Wolf. Everybody knows Wolf, so I'll, yeah. I'll name drop him. But yeah, it's it's helping people get better at the game and just like spreading spreading the, you know, competitive play. And it's like, everyone's getting a lot better. So especially with that and how big the tournament was, cutting this is actually really crazy. Again, it has not hit me yet at all, but. Yeah. Well, it needs to hit you. I know, it'll, it'll happen when I'm done, whatever that is. <laughs> you're, you're about to go play your top eight, so mm -hmm. I'll let you go get ready for that. Yes. Go in prepared. Uh, obviously, I, I now am a little bit biased because I do want to see the Slitherwing. But, right, you know, there's with, stakes now on the line With here. that in mind, I have to just let you know, go into top eight knowing mm -hmm. that you are my favorite. Yeah. I appreciate it. I lost Joe's favorite Naga, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. you betrayed Joe, but I'm backing you up. Okay, cool, with cool. With that said, top eight is right around the corner, so we'll be getting into that very, very shortly.